In the world of The Last of Us, a fungal-based pandemic spreads throughout the United States, killing roughly 60% of the population. In today's video, we will delve into this fungal-based infection and learn what, why, and how it functions, and what happens to those who are infected. The cordyceps mushroom is a parasitic fungus that can take control of its host's mind and alter their behavior. Originally, this cordyceps was only able to affect insects and arthropods, but a new species has emerged with the ability to target humans. The cordyceps fungus begins as a spore, which pollinates in the air and attacks those who come into contact with it. There are two known ways a person can transmit the cordyceps infection. The first is by breathing the spores emitted by the cordyceps. The second is the contact with bodily fluid of those infected with the disease. When the spore attacks its host, it infects the brain and evolves into fungi. The cordyceps uses the host as a breeding ground to begin developing the growth of fungus within the body. The cordyceps acts like a parasite and it should be noted that when the cordyceps attacks the brain, it does not kill the brain. The brain itself remains completely functional but is now under the influence of the cordyceps. To those who are infected by the cordyceps, there are various stages involved. We begin this journey with the first stage, known as the incubation process. This begins as soon as the host transmits the disease. After initial infection, the parasite travels to the host's brain over a period of one to two days. Once the parasite has reached the brain, the host begins to display erratic and violent behavior. The incubation process concludes when the cordyceps has taken over all major bodily functions of the host. Once the infection has settled in, we reach the second stage, known as runners. During this stage, the cordyceps fungus begins growing within the brain. The fungus will push its way towards the eyes and continue to grow further within the body. The runner will act based on instinct, meaning it will attack anyone who is not infected. This can be presumed to be a method the cordyceps uses to spread the disease. The runner moans and and cries erratically, suggesting that the host is trying to resist the influence of the cordyceps. Because we know that the brain does not die, there is a chance that those who have reached the stage are consciously aware of what is happening, but are powerless to do anything about it. As the months go by, we reach the third stage, known as stalkers. During this stage, the fungus has had plenty of time to feed and grow within the body, to the extent that the fungus begins to break through the skin and most notably, the eye socket. Due to the fungus breaking through the eye socket, the stalker's vision begins to diminish. It is at this point in time, the cordyceps begins to develop a new way of seeing with a technique known as echolocation. Echolocation involves using sound to see the world around you, and animals such as bats use this technique. In effect, the stalker begins to produce distinct croaking noises to learn the technique of echolocation. As the years go by, we reach the fourth stage, known as clickers. During this stage, the prolonged exposure to the fungus has resulted in a growth all over the face and all throughout the body. The clicker is completely blind and relies on echolocation to see. As a result, the croaking noise from the stalker stage has evolved into a more precise clicking noise. To those who do reach the clicker stage, the host no longer resists the fungus. This means whatever humanity existed has now been eliminated. 
as the years turn into a decade, we reach the fifth stage known as bloaters. This is the most rarest stage and it is not common for an infected to make it this far. During this stage, the fungus has had at least a decade to thrive and prosper. The fungus has grown so large that there are layers of fungal colonies growing on top of the body. Bloaters carry bombs filled with spores to create large spore clouds to further spread the cordyceps disease. When the body dies, the cordyceps is unaffected and will continue to live on. The cordyceps will begin to grow into a large fungal plant that surrounds the corpse. The fungal plant will then begin to emit spores into the air to spread the disease, thus repeating the cordyceps life cycle. Like most fungal species, the cordyceps growth rate varies amongst different environments. The cordyceps grows more efficiently in dark, cool, moist areas, while the growth rate slows down in bright, warm, dry areas. There is no known cure for the cordyceps disease. There is Ellie, however, who is the only known person who is immune to the disease. This is because Ellie has developed a mutation to the brain. Could the mutation be an answer to the cure? Maybe we will find out in The Last of Us 2. But that is it for the Cordyceps explanation. Did this video help you understand the Cordyceps? Let me know in the comments down below. And other than that, I hope you snakes enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day. And most importantly, be like a Cordyceps and stay moist, everybody. Cheers.